Hey, I want to thank you for joining us this morning. I know God is going to be here this morning. He's going to do some great things in our service. So we're here and we're ready for service this morning. Uh, all of our greeters are in place. Things are going great. We're expecting God to do great things in our message today. And so I'm glad you're joining us and we look forward to talking with you right after the service. God bless you. Veterans Day is an annual United States holiday which honors uh, military veterans, those that are active and those that are not. The day falls on the anniversary of signing the armistice of the World War I. Major hostilities had taken place in World War I, were formally ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, the German signing of this armistice. President Woodward Wilson first proclaimed on, day, on this day on November 11, 1919. In, in, in declaring the holiday, he said, To us, America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with lots of pride in the hero, heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude for the victory both because of the thing from which it has freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of the nation. As one reads the writings of the Apostle Paul, we also find here it's easy to see that he looked at Christians' life not from a standpoint of frolicking around, but he looked at a Christian standpoint of life as a fight. We as Christians are called into a war. We are called to stand ready to defend and ready to stand guard, ready to present. We are called to be there. To Paul, the life of believer was not rest, but it was a race. It was not a moment. It was a marathon. Now, for somebody like me who's never ran a marathon... Even the thought of a marathon makes me sick. <laughs> I thought about training for one, one day. <laughs> and then I realized it would take more than one day. You don't wake up one day and decide that you're going to run a marathon. You decide you're going to run a marathon and you work and work and work and work to get conditioned and ready for it. Sad to say there are many Christians who, though they have been drafted into this army of the Lord, they're not interested in wrestling or wearing a uniform. But the Apostle Paul reminds us of his words to young Timothy that service in the Lord's army is more than just a uniform. It calls for the complete, total, and utter giving of yourself to be a true veteran of war. I can tell you that the men and women who represent the veterans in our church did not one day just wake up and say, I'll just enlist. It's going to be a good time. Many people enlisted because it was the greatest honor in our country is to serve it. It's a lost art in our country. Because we have and so long made our country, we cheapened it by saying that we are nothing, that we're no good, that we are creators of evil around the world. But the Bible tells us that when a nation humbles themselves and declares Jesus Christ and the freedom of Jesus Christ, that we are not like any other nation. The, nation, the Bible says to guard that nation. The Bible says to fortify the nation. The Bible says to hold true to it. Our Christian values, the values that we have, we have got to stand for them. We have got to stand ready to defend them at all cost. Our schools are taking the history out of our history books. 
It's been a sly, quick, and easy thing to do because us Christians, we're more worried about what song we sing in church or did I get my pew or is it too hot or too cold? We're not worried about what they're teaching our children. Oh. Oh. He started meddling now. Started getting all up in our business. You see, that's what happens to us. We go to sleep when we get comfortable in church. We get comfortable, and then when we get comfortable, we criticize. We find so much to complain about in church that then we have lost sight of what's really going on in the battle. Men and women who have served in the military, when you were there in your training, did they want you concentrating on the superfluous stuff around you? Did they ask you to worry about your meal? Did they ask you whether or not you liked what they gave you to eat? Were they concerned about how hot you were in some hole someplace? Were they worried about how much you carried on your back? Were they worried about how much time and energy you put into it? Were they worried when you left your family and crying babies and you went off to war? No. You know why? You had a country to defend. You had a country, something that was bigger than you, something greater than you. I don't to tell you, my, I can't even talk today. You guys are making me nervous. I'm trying to impress them. Have you, these are my friends. I don't know, I, don't, I usually introduce my friends, right? So this is Judy Hutchinson. This is uh, Dodge Anderson. And this is Tara Anderson. This is uh, Maddie's mom, Aura. And this is uh, Preston. And that's uh, Colton. And you guys know my son, Connor, whatever your name is. His brother is Colton. Give me a break. <laughs> but I'm glad you guys are here. And I hope I don't embarrass you too badly. But probably will since you're in this spit zone. But... <laughs> <laughs> to Paul, the life of a believer was not rest. To the military, they're not concerned about those things because they don't want you worrying about whether or not your, salt, your mashed potatoes had enough salt and pepper in them. They're going to pepper them and salt them and give them to you. And you're going to eat them. <laughs> and you're going to love them. Because as hungry as you're going to be, you ain't got no room to complain. When you get a hold of it, you're going to be glad you got it. Amen? In church, you know what we've done? We've made it so comfortable that everything you get fed, you complain about. Oh, here he goes again, trying to tell the truth. But the Apostle Paul reminds us from his words to young Timothy, the service of the Lord's army is more. It's more. It calls for complete, total, and utter giving of oneself. See, it tells us to be courageous. A true veteran of war is courageous. You see, in the word it says we stand in grace. It is by God's grace that we stand. Only his grace that we stand. I was praying with somebody yesterday and I told them they had, had, had thought about suicide at one point. And I said to them, I want you to know, is that me making that noise? I want you guys to think I got gas. But the, I, I was talking to them and they were, I don't even remember what they're saying. Um, they were telling us yesterday that he said, it is by grace that we are able to stand. And the scripture tells us that. But they were saying that when we look at our lives, in whether we live or we die, it's not our choice. I said to him, 
Jesus gives you that. He's the giver of life. He's the taker of it. And I don't care what stage of life we are in. We're going to give account for every life we take. Whether it's my own or someone else's. We're going to give account for it. If we think that our hands are clean in the blood shedding that takes place across our country, it is not clean. Uh Uh-oh, well, what do you mean, Pastor? Here's what I mean. For us to know right and not do it is a sin. For us to know right and not do it is a sin. If you get into this word and you read this word, it will give you step-by-step instructions of what you believe in and what you don't believe in. It will tell you exactly how God feels about things that we should be involved in as the army of God. He has called us up and he has not asked us our opinion If he had asked us our opinion, I would have told him that I should drive a nice new car. I would be able to turn to this and I would be able to show you how those things should be. But when I look at this, the Bible tells me it doesn't matter what car I'm driving. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing. What matters is where is my heart? My heart has to be connected to Jesus. What does that mean? It means grace and only grace. Because by grace, we stand with Jesus. We need grace. I need the grace of God every single day. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You see, the word strong here is that Greek word that we often use. and It's called in dunamis power. It's the power of God that comes on you. The word speaks of it enabled or in strengthened. The idea is that we do not stand in our own power, but we stand in the power and the grace of God. So that when sickness comes on us, So when someone is shooting fiery darts at us, when someone is attacking our family, when our finances are down, when there's trouble around us, the Bible says we don't stand on our own. But it says be courageous. Know this one thing, that I have equipped you for this fight. I've called you. We are in a fight. We have two options. We can fight or we can flight. We can run from it, and many of us do. We run and run and run and run and run. We know Jesus is calling us. Jesus wants a daily personal relationship with us, and we're running as fast as we can. We're serving religion. We're serving what we think is right to do, and we're running along as fast as we can, and we are serving no one but ourselves. Because Jesus said, We stand and we fight. We're courageous. If we stand in our own strength, we will become depressed. Uh Uh-oh. Discouraged. Defeated. As a, I haven't taken these off in a while. (laughs) As a church, do you hear those words around church a lot? I'm depressed. Oh, Lord, Pastor, <laughs> the devil been after me. <laughs> he about got me defeated. Oh, Pastor, it's been a hard week. Not just a hard week, but a hard week. Pastor, I'm depressed. Pastor, I feel defeated. Pastor, this sickness has got me. I know what that's like. I've been depressed. I've been discouraged. 
I dare say I've been defeated a time or two. But I want you to know this this morning. That's not what Jesus is doing in his work. You know what his work is doing? It's empowering Christians to stand in the midst of their troubles and take stand and fight with courage because we are standing in the grace and the mercy of our God. We have dunamis power of living in God inside of us. We serve by grace. We have found out that the only time Jesus will fight is when I cease to fight. I can fight the battle all I want to on my own. And I can worry and I can struggle. But when I cease the fight, the Bible tells me that's when I empower Jesus to do his best work. Jesus will not fight with his children. He will not struggle with us to take control of something In our life. Instead, Jesus will let us go through the trials. He will stand next to us all the way. He will stand there and say, My child, my child, my child, waiting patiently for you and I to surrender. All we have to do is look up and say, Lord, I need. I need you. See, I remember that day when I was there, laying down, broken, destroyed, defeated. I'd given the enemy everything to use against me. I was exhausted physically. I was emotionally bankrupt. I was practically financially bankrupt. And there I lay. And then I said, Jesus, I need you. If you are God, then raise me up. And just as that day when Lazarus was in the tomb. I'm going to get you for that. (laughs) When Lazarus was in that tomb and Jesus came forth and he said, Lazarus. Oh, Pastor. Oh, oh, Jesus, don't wake him. (laughs) He's smelly in there. (laughs) You know how we are. You know how us Christians are. Just let it lie. (laughs) Hey, it's going to be bad. You know he'd been dead for days. <laughs> Leave him there. And Jesus, we're told, was touched. He wept. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Come up out of there. I remember in that living room at 230 South Central, Buckner, Missouri, laying there on that couch, and Jesus said to me, J.D., come up out of there. Come up out of that pit. You have the grace of God standing with you, and you can rise up, and you can do more for me than you've ever done before. Rise up out of that pit. This morning, he's telling us, rise up. Stop trying. Start trusting. Trust him. The same grace that compelled him to, is to compel us. It has been God's grace that it has enabled us, equipped us, and empowered us to do great things. It says, be tenacious. A warrior is tenacious. Have you met him? <laughs> tenacious, I, it is like a stick to Tenacity is like you adhere to something. You hang on to it. You don't get shook off when things get rough. I love it. I have friends in my life. They're tenacious. Wherever I go, there's going to be a struggle. (laughs) I have a way about a whirlwind about me that is just... I'm always moving, always shaking something up, always trying something new, always want to do it differently. And I've, 
I'm glad I've got tenacious people around me. Tenacious people who say, I'm sticking with you because I know you've been called to a battle. There is no rosy picture of the Christian life. It's not all honey and no bees. It's not all flowers and no trees. There was a great Bible teacher that tells of a time when a young, proud seminary student came into his office. The student said, you know, when I first came to the seminary, my life was full of temptations and struggles. But now after studying Greek, Hebrew, and theology, my life is smooth as glass. The great professor looked at the young student and said, young man, that's the worst thing you could have said to me. Because you came here, at least you were in the battle. But now you've shown me that the enemy doesn't even think you're worth harassing. If the enemy is not chasing you, then you have already joined the other team. Amen? Have you ever played a game of tag and you're running along and you look and nobody's chasing you? Nobody cared if you were it. <laughs> I've been there. I never really ran very fast. But I was running along and I look, hey, God, you guys want to play with me? Nobody there. Nobody there. You see, if you are on the Lord's team, If you are a true Christian, a true veteran of the war that we're in, people will be after you. People will be saying bad things about you. People will be criticizing you. Because the enemy uses those things to destroy you. But Jesus is saying, I want you to be tenacious. I want you to be strong. I want you to understand there may be immense troubles. See, Paul was well familiar with immense troubles in the Christian life. Have you ever thought about Paul? I mean, shipwrecked, beaten, ran out of town, thrown in prison, put under house arrest for two years. Sounds kind of like you, Josh. Bitten by a viper, accused of being a devil, a rioter, and a false prophet. He had a thorn of flesh that he couldn't get rid of. We don't know what it was. The Bible speaks of it like it might have been a sickness, something that plagued him. We don't know what it was that he carried, but he carried something with him his entire life. But these immense troubles only gave him motivation to endure all things for God's sake. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Many Christians give up, get out, and go on wherever their troubles come in their lives. I've never understood why people get out of church and get away from God when trouble comes. You don't need God when everything's going good. We go to church, we sit in here and it's comfortable. If it gets too hot, I get a note. If it gets too cold, I get a note. I get a lot of cold notes. (laughs) We come to church and we think that all of this is just for us. It's not. You know, the one thing that we want most more than anything else in the entire world, I want to see lost souls come to Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here, Matt. I want to see lost souls come to Jesus Christ. I want to see people pulled out of the gutters of life and come to a knowing of Jesus Christ. I want to see people's lives changed. I don't want a bunch of fluffy, happy Christians. I want warriors. 
Abby called me last night on the phone, and she said, Tony would like to stand in. And I said, yes, we've been talking about this all weekend. And she said, oh, well, if somebody else wants to do it. Oh, no, honey, we're Warren. We're going to stand in the middle. Tony, thank you for being willing to stand and say, I'll take the enemy on. I'm going to stand, and I'm going to fight. I wrote her back, and I said, I'm glad we got a house of warriors. Let's get in the battle. Let's fight. Let's not back down to them that tell us we're too fanatical. Let's not back down to them that tell us we shouldn't be involved in the world's politics. We shouldn't be involved in what's going on around the nation. I think we should be involved. We're God's people. And God has given us the great land that we might fortake it and that we will serve him. He said, if my people who are called by my name, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, he'll bring the blessing to our country, to our land. I'm thankful for my forefathers who stood. You read about our forefathers. How many of you have been history like history? Anybody besides me? I couldn't do math, so history was the next best thing. So I'd read a lot of history, and I loved history. But when you get in and you look at our forefathers, the one thing I know about them, they were not ashamed that they served a God that was bigger than them. I also love this about them, that they came from a place where they were told how to worship. And what they had to do. And they established this country that we had freedoms to worship as we please. You see, people say, well, don't you wish that everybody was assembly of God? Oh, no, I do not. No way. Can you imagine... Now, you know if you cut these veins here that I bleed assembly of God. I raised on it, cut my teeth on it. That's all I've ever known is assembly of God. So I mean no disrespect, but I'll guarantee you, I don't want everybody to be assembly of God because you know what? We are some sour folk. Righteous folk that are full of themselves. There's a reason why our churches in the assembly of God is on a decline. You know why? We got comfortable. We got comfortable. We got comfortable. We used to be the assembly of God denomination that went into every part of the world. We were fighting. We were standing strong. We weren't afraid of political battles. We weren't afraid of anything. We stood for Jesus Christ. And then we got comfortable. Isn't God great? did a great thing today in our service. We're seeing the Spirit of God move. Every single week, God is doing something wonderful here. We're seeing lives change. People dedicate themselves to God, and we're glad you're a part of it. So thanks for joining us this morning. We look forward to you coming back. If you have questions or need more information, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the church. Visit our Facebook page or go to our website. We're new, it went new life. We're expecting new life to happen in our community. God bless you.